Hello, this is a presentation, a uh, part of a series of uh, IoT manufacturing uh, workflows and use cases. Today, uh, Andreas Bajinos, CTO of Advanced Engineering Solutions, and myself, Jose Coronado, a Creo Product Management Director at PTC, will present several topics on IoT manufacturing and specific about lattice modeling. This is the agenda for today. Uh, a little bit about Creo additive manufacturing, very quickly, lattice modeling, that rocket nozzle demonstrator designed by Andreas, a little bit about the progression matrix on additive solutions in Creo, and some uh, remarks. About Creo additive manufacturing strategy, just very quickly, uh, for those that are not familiar with Creo additive manufacturing solutions, we have been working diligently over the last releases to bring your solution on additive manufacturing to enable lightweight design. Today, we have two main technologies for lightweight designs. One is generative uh, and, the other is, and the other is lattice modeling. Uh, all of them with the backbone of simulation technologies that can validate uh, your designs, eliminate support structures, improve interoperability with 3D printers and enable biomimicry as a byproduct as well. And all of this fully embedded into the Creo design environment. Uh, everything we do, either if it's integrating a third party solution or developing the, the uh, solution ourselves, PTC, everything, all the functionality is fully embedded into Creo. Let's talk I'll just quickly about lattice modeling. Lattice modeling is not new, having in nature for a while. <laughs> so lattices, in some sense, are bio-inspired configurations based on repeating unit cells. And there are many uh, ways to create a lattice, but the notion is the same. It's, it's a cell that it can be repeated in X, Y, and Z. It could be based on beams and nodes, what we call beam based lattices it can be a, a based on extrusions like the honeycombs that we called a extruded two and a half d lattices or could be more complex lattice like the triply periodic minimal surfaces like gyros this is just to say that lattices have been around uh, us in nature now the cat systems like creo can handle the lattice uh, modeling to uh, improve the designs and with Creo manufacturing, now it's possible to, uh, uh, to produce them, to manufacture, to make it real. So there is one a specific uh, use case that we want to uh, highlight today. That is uh, the structural ribbing. In Creo, it's possible to do this kind of uh, structurals, uh, structural ribbing uh, structures that will reinforce thin walled components, thin walled designs. So you want to 3D print this uh, type of uh, parts. Uh, there is a methodology in Creo to do that. It's not one button, it's not one command, but it's a methodology. And I think uh, Andrea's design will highlight uh, the, the process and will show how this can work. So without saying more about this, uh, Andreas, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, your rocket nozzle demonstrator is uh, very interesting for sure. So please uh, take the control of the presentation. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Andreas Vlahinos, and I'll try to share some simple building modeling strategies for generating complex geometries. And for an exemplar, we'll use a simple model of a rocket nozzle. What happened in rocket, rocket nozzle, you have a fuel and an oxidizer, and you pump them in in a combustion chamber. And so we'll show how we can lightweight and cool combustion chambers for rocket nozzles. Here is some examples, let's say, from SpaceX or Blue Origin or various others. So you can see all of them have the same typical shape, but they all have also very demanding structural and thermal performance requirements, especially cooling requirements, because it's very hot. 
So it will melt the material if you don't have an active cooling. And the coolant can be the fuel. So we'll see how in a simple example we'll generate something like that. Here is a simple CREO model which has some structural ribbon oriented 45 degrees with respect to the print direction. It has a few cooling channels which they go all the way down. They turn around and come back and they have an outlet here so they can mix the fuel they just took from there and it will be warmer fuel but it will be a cooler nozzle. If we see a cross section, you can see an inlet here and there is a channel going out. It goes towards the screen and comes back. And here is a, an outlet channel which comes back out and sprays here. So if we have typical geometries like that, the question is how, how can we make them with a very simple way. So I'll spend five, 10 minutes to show you something like that. This is a cross section uh, closer to the top, which you can see the, the inlet portion of the cooling channel and the outlet portion of the cooling channel here. Um, the nice thing is if this is B-Rep geometry, so there is no restrictions on how to simulate it. So here is a cross section through a solid portion. Here is a cross section through the channels. And here is a temperature profile. If you can specify the heat loads and the heat transfer coefficients, that can be come immediately uh, generated the results can be immediately generated. You can, somebody may be able to see the cooling channel profiles here in the temperature. Of course, you can see also the turnaround of the cooling channel right here. So, and also you can see that if somebody plots not only the temperature but the heat flux, you can see the areas with the heat flows and it's a little bit more clear where the cooling channels are. So you can see a cooling channel here, a lot of heat flux at the turnaround point, and then it continues to come up. Now, if we see it inside, it would look like that. So you can see the profile of the cooling channels. All of those things, the number of the cooling channels, the cross-section of the cooling channels, the profile of the cooling channels, it, it just sketches on a flat, which they can be morphed to this shape. So it's very easy to do design and parametric studies of this. Uh, let me jump to Creo so we can see live uh, the process. So now let's see how we can build these complex geometries in Creo, but made simple. That's the idea. As you can see, this model contains a sketch, which has the profile of this. I mean, I can turn it on and you can see the profile, this green line. Um, oh, and then you can create a little um, rectangular to extrude it, to make a solid. And then you create a coordinate system to control the orientation of the lattices. And then you have the lattice feature. Now, if I try to edit that lattice feature, for example, I can change the size very easily and say, make it double what it was before and say, regenerate the feature. So now I can have the same thing with, you know, different um, size. But it says, well, how about the shape? Okay, we'll do the same thing. You go there, you redefine the feature and say, I don't want to have it oriented 45 degrees. I want to go against the coordinate system, the global coordinate system. For the cell type, I guess I can select the triangle. And um, I can say, let's try that. We can change the cell type and we will see how the new design will look like. So now we have infill the exterior with um, 
a triangular lattice, which we used to call this isogrid. So you can see it's fully B rep geometry, you know, all the features are there. So if you wanted to add a fillet there, for example, you could, or, you know, whatever else. And you can see the channels going through, but less ribbing. So another option says, well, can we change it to hexagon and edit the lattice feature? And if you can see the lattice feature, you specify the body you want to infill, the coordinate system. And if you create a cell with surfaces to move, and you know, we move this surface and the back surface and the front surface, the cell type, let's make it now a hexagon and you can have a preview down there, and you can add fillets or not. You can add fillet radius between them or change the wall thickness and et cetera, or you can make it a different body. And then you can try that to say, to regenerate that feature. So now we can see the, you know, the new model. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of complex geometry, but made simple. That's the the message, uh, you know, it's very, you know, intuitive, the interface, so you can build them very fast. Um, that's the, the quick demonstration of how to build a rocket nozzle with Koenig channels and multiple versions of options for the structural ribbing outside. And of course, if you have the appropriate boundary conditions, like if you know the heat flux on the surfaces, and if you know the heat transfer coefficient at the cooling channels, and you have these simplified assumptions, you can go to a live simulation, which you can see, for example, here it's the channels. If you go and see one of the channels, you can see the the path of the flow channel going up, and you can specify a heat transfer coefficient and the temperature, and then some kind of a heat load on the heat flux surfaces. Then you can say simulate. And um, yeah, it. You know, this simulation is complex, but try to imagine that what we have to do uh, before we have to transfer this. Um, let's take the, you know, things out so you can see how fast it takes it to compute the simulation. Of course, you need to have the big challenge to have the right boundary conditions here so you can generate the thing, but you can observe the cooling channel temperature, and I have it at a very low resolution. So it will be very easy to get preliminary results if you have a established set of boundary conditions to do the thermal problem. Thank you very much. Andrea, thank you so much for this demonstration. Now to finish the presentation, uh, I will take one minute to show you the progression matrix of uh, additive manufacturing solutions in Creo. It's a lot of wording here, a lot of uh, uh, items, but it's just to show you the progression. If you are still in Creo 5, for instance, or Creo 6, you can, when you review this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation that uh, we'll make available, is uh, um, you will see what is the difference. Uh, we have been working a lot of lattice modeling. For instance, uh, here, let's see, Creo 8. Uh, remove se selective removal of dangling beams. So very specific functionalities to improve the uh, use cases that we can cover with lattices, for instance, or uh, the Amphion additive process simulation for Creo that was included in Creo 7 and Creo 8, being Amphion not a PTC product, but is uh, fully embedded inside in the Creo UI. And uh, just a final remark, as uh, I was mentioning at the beginning, one of our objectives is to have all the functionality related to additive manufacturing, modeling, uh, preparation for the uh, printing itself, etc., inside Creo. So right now, you can, if you are using Creo 8, 
you can benefit of generative design, parametric lattices with multiple representations that we didn't cover, multiple representations here, but uh, in another of the series, you can see the difference between solid, the full representation, simplified representation, and so on. You can always calculate, calculate accurate mass properties. You have different sets of simulation-driven geometry. There are many ways to, to, to make the geometry follow what the simulation results are giving you to do optimization, even in real time with Creo Simulate Live that was used in this, in this presentation. The process simulation with Amphion, uh, connectivity with metal printers, and everything with the uh, UI that you are familiar with in inside Creo. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Andreas, for uh, the demonstration. And we will wrap up with this. Thank you.